And so if you're healthy, be thankful to Allah, and Allah will increase your health. And if you're thankful in times of ease, then when the hardship comes, then Allah will know you also. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي شِدَّةِ Know Allah in times of ease, and Allah will know you in times of hardship. Meaning, be thankful, worship Allah, and make use of your time while you're healthy, while you're strong. Make use of that time, and know Allah, and take advantage of that time to do all that which pleases Allah, then when the time of hardship comes, Allah will know you also. The Prophet ﷺ told this about three people. Three people. Who were, tra- they were traveling, and at night time, when, when night fell upon them, they looked for a place to spend the night. And so they found a cave to spend the night. When they went into the cave, a large boulder rolled down from the hill, from the mountain, and covered the mouth of the cave. This was such a large boulder that none of them were able to push it out. They were not able to push. And so they were stuck in the cave. So one of them said, one of them said, Oh Allah, he said, you know, we cannot escape. We will not be free from this calamity unless we ask Allah with our righteous deeds. I mean, the pious deeds that we used to do. And so, this is, this is a time in which they were not able to push this boulder. And they're stuck. And they have nobody else to turn to. And they know that they will be finished. They will die. Unless Allah helps them. Nobody else is there. There's no hope except in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the first one says, Oh Allah, I used to have parents who were older in age. And so then when they became older in age, I took care of them. And one day, I returned home very late because I was looking for pasture for my flock. For my flock. And so I returned home very late. And in our house, nobody ate or drank or nobody had their supper before my parents did. They were, you know, priority. And so when I came home, I found them asleep. Because I was late, I found them asleep. And so my, nobody ate. My family, none, nobody in the house, none. My, even my children did not eat. They were so hungry, they were in fact crying. But you know what? My parents are always first. And so he said, I went and I milked I got milk for them. I, you know, milked my, my sheep or whatever he had in, in, in terms of livestock. And so he brought milk and he sat next two glasses of milk and he sat next to the bed. He sat next to the bed and he said, I was afraid to make noise because I didn't want to bother them or disturb them and wake them from their sleep. Look how this person was. He's so kind and righteous towards his, his, his parents that he doesn't want them to wake up. He wants them to have a full sleep. And nowadays, you have many of the children, the youth, nowadays, the parents are awake because they don't know where their children are. Not, not only are they bothering, they don't even know where their children are because the, par- the children are so disobedient. And... Um, so bad that maybe the parents can't sleep at night time because of that. And so look at this person. He said, I spent the whole night waiting, hoping, or maybe just, just in case that they would wake up. And when they did wake up, they would have their ghabuk, means their nightly drink. And so they, they didn't wake up until dawn, until fajr time. And when they woke up, I gave them their drink. And he said, Oh Allah, if I did this for your sake, then free me from the calamity that I'm in. Free me from the calamity that I'm in. And so the boulder moved, but it didn't move enough. It moved just a little bit, just enough uh, for them to see outside. But they they could not leave the cave. And But when you reflect upon this, and of course the second person, you can read more 
about the second person also uh, of what he did and the third person also all three of them did that until finally they were able to escape but just the, I'll just give you the example of the first one just because uh, of the time uh, restraints that we have um, the first person he was look how kind he was to his parents he but the thing is what he did for his parents is nothing more than what his parents had already done for him when you really think about it think about it carefully when we were infants when we were babies our parents took care of us and if they didn't have enough food or they had the good part good food they gave it to us and they would starve and give it to us instead and if there was only enough and they would just give it to us first before anybody else and at night time any time of the night if you woke up that night before they would go to sleep they would make sure you have enough milk you know I have a I have a, a daughter who's 10 months old and when we, when we ran out of milk at 2 uh, maybe at 12 o'clock my wife would say you know we've run out of milk I mean there's only a little bit left you have to go to the, to, to the supermarket or to the, the, the corner grocery store. You, got, you have to get that milk. I'm going, I'm tired. Can't we just give her, give her water? <laughs> she says, no. He said, no. You go get the milk. And I go and get the keys and I drive at night time, like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. It doesn't matter what time it is. You go. You go. You know, our parents, they did that for us. Before they went to sleep, they made sure that we had milk ready. They had their milk for that night so that you would wake up any time of the night. They didn't complain, oh, why did you wake up at this time? No, it was ready for you. It was ready for you. They already did that for us. So any, if you did the same thing that this man did, you would only be trying to repay what they had already done. And so, but this, the, the point of proof here is that in times of hardship, see these people, they made dua to Allah. And they had good deeds because they took advantage, advantage of the health and energy that they had before calamity struck.